April 21st, 2019, Easter Sunday. For those of you who are unaware, Easter is a Christian holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ who was sent down to earth by his father, God, to save all of the sinners of the world from eternal damnation by dying on the cross for all of their sins. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure it's kind of a big deal to all Christians unilaterally across the board, so that's something to be noted. On April 21st, 2019, Sri Lanka, eight bombs went off killing a total of 290 people and enduring hundreds more. So obviously in such an event, the expectation of world leaders is to respond appropriately to the situation, which did not happen. Which brings me to what I'd like to talk to you all about today. Let's start off on a slightly different note than what I want to end on. Trump tweets 138 million killed in Sri Lanka blasts. President Trump offered his condolences to the victims of the deadly Sri Lanka blasts on Easter Sunday, but initially did so with a tweet that had an absurdly high death toll statistic. Quote, heartfelt condolences from the people of the United States to the people of Sri Lanka on the horrible terrorist attacks on churches and hotels that have killed at least 138 million people and badly injured 600 more. We stand ready to help, Trump said in a tweet Sunday morning. This embarrassing error was up for about 20 minutes before being deleted. It has now been corrected, as you can obviously see, based off of this um, screenshot that I took of President Trump's tweet. Now keep in mind that Trump's original tweet was a mistake, and it was removed from his Twitter and corrected as soon as likely he was alerted to the fact that he had made a mistake. So it wasn't intentional. Note that, please. It's funny that in such a time of crisis, in such a time of sadness and terror and all that jazz, that a BuzzFeed news editor would take this opportunity to own the president in such a way, politicize the issue, um, make it into a racial issue. Quote, BuzzFeed news editor crushed by Twitter ratio for Sri Lanka bombings jab at Trump. The tweet in question. Suspect we'd be hearing a lot more outrage from Trump and co if the Christians killed in Sri Lanka were white, end quote. Interesting, interesting indeed. Naturally, this was ratioed to all hell. Quote, Elder Street was ratioed, meaning the number of comments vastly outnumbered retweets and likes, a sign of widespread negative reaction. Multiple users criticized Elder for her near instant politicization of the attacks that had killed more than 200 people, including some American citizens. So I'm not the only one that thinks that this is kind of outrageous. But you know, it, it is interesting that she would seek to make this into a, 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 a measuring contest of sorts racially, when in fact this is an actual issue that people have turned into a measuring contest by virtue of the fact that a former president and a former first lady have saw fit to propose, I guess, a new way of referencing the people who suffered during this attack. Let me just, I can't, I can't do it justice, so I'm just gonna read it for you. Barack Obama quote, the attacks on tourists and Easter worshippers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity. On a day devoted to love, redemption, and renewal, we pray for the victims and stand with the people of Sri Lanka. Hillary said pretty much a similar statement, not quite word for word. Quote, on this holy weekend for many faiths, many, Okay. We must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Easter worshippers and travelers in Sri Lanka. I have to ask, what are Easter worshippers? Honestly, I, like, are, are, are they people who worship and idolatrize the giant head statues on Easter Island? Perhaps another explanation. They were catering to Easter enthusiasts of the 1901 play by Swedish playwright August Strindberg. Certainly, they could not have intended to refer to Christians with such a remark. Why on earth would you do something like that? What the heckin' is an Easter worshipper? Honestly. Um, the best explanation that I could propose for what an Easter worshipper is, is it's a Carlinism, that is George Carlin, that essentially endorses soft language, which is a euphemistic expression intended to conceal 
reality. We'll get into what I mean by this. But it is funny, because I was unaware that this was a thing. That, that on Easter there was a giant pastel-colored chocolate bunny that poops chocolate eggs that vast amounts of people flock to for their mornings, wearing wearing their Sunday bests, in fact, in an effort to satiate the ethereal sky rabbit. Who knew? I certainly didn't. You learn something new every day. But apparently the phrase Easter worshippers is meant to refer to Christians. Okay. Apparently I am just not hip to the, to the new lingo you kids have been swinging around these days. How do you do, fellow kids? And it should be noted that it is actually not just a former president and a former first lady, but it is also a current mayor of San Antonio. It's also a current congressman for Arizona's 9th district. It's also the mayor of Winnipeg. It's also a U.S. House representative for California. It's also, you thought we were done, we're not done. Representative of Michigan's 5th Congressional District, Representative Dan Kildee. It's also, because you thought I was done, Governor of Colorado. You know, there's probably a few more. These are the, just the ones that I bothered to look into because they were just so easy to find because it's so freaking blatant. <laughs> and I digress. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you why this is bugging me so much. If labels and identities of people, individuals, whatever, you know, like for instance, women, Hillary, or say the identity of black, or in Obama's case, mixed race, I guess, Obama. If these are so important to people, if they're so important that entire careers are predicated on getting people elected into office based on said identities, if, if they are that important, if, people, if people's identities are what differentiate them from being in a certain position within the workplace and not, with being privileged and being not, and what have you, Take your pick fancy virtue signally backwashed um, talking point. If they are so important to people, then they must always be important. Not just when it's convenient for your gaining political offices or, you know, defending against legitimate criticisms or perhaps, I don't know, coming up with a bull excuse for why you need more money. I'm, I'm gonna say it very clearly so that you understand, right? If language is important and words in fact mean things, then Easter worshiper isn't only blatantly false, it's actually insulting to Christians, believe it or not. Why, 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 why is calling Christians Easter worshippers so completely asinine and insulting, you might be asking? Well, I'll tell you. It speaks to a level of cultural ignorance on the part of the people spouting such nonsense. <laughs> because in fact, one of the 10 commandments, I believe it's number one, is this, quote, I am the Lord thy God, thou shall not have any strange gods before me. This commandment forbids, without exception, the concept of idolatry, which is kind of what you are going at when you call Christians Easter worshippers. They don't celebrate the holiday of Easter, which has become synonymous with bunnies and chocolate-covered eggs and peeps. They celebrate the resurrection of their Lord, and if you can't understand that, 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 that that's ridiculous. More importantly though, and this, <laughs> this is probably not as big an issue for other people as it is me, but as, as someone who enjoys a life of simplicity and concision, or would like to at least, the fact that you had the opportunity con to, to conserve letters for concision's sake and you didn't take it, that in itself is a personal sin from me to you, all right? Sin. This is also an all too obvious attempt to circumvent the reality that this horrible act of violence, every explosion, every death, it's all targeted religious terrorism, but it's shielding you from that reality, that truth. Remember what I was talking about earlier with the Carlinisms? Yeah, I said. I said, I said, conceal reality. Because the reality is Christians were persecuted on Easter. The reality is they were targeted by an Islamic extremist group because of their religion and they suffered for it and they died for it. So to deny them that simple thing, their identity as Christians on a day where their identity as Christian matters in an event where their identity as Christians matter is... <laughs> I 
I don't really know any of the words for it. it it's <sighs> mind boggling. Yeah, that'll work. The reason why we have to conceal reality, though, is because it's inconvenient to the narrative that's been propagated for the past, what, 20 years now, is it? That poor, oppressed Muslims are being <laughs> hate crimed, <laughs> Islamophobed against by horrible Christians all across the Western world, which I think has been blown epically out of proportion, but that's just my opinion, and you know, my opinion is the one that matters on this channel, so it's the one that's getting voiced. It'd be less ridiculous, perhaps, maybe, if these statements that I'm looking at here hadn't followed the March 15th, 2019 attack on Christchurch in New Zealand. Quote, Michelle and I send our condolences to the people of New Zealand. We grieve with you and the Muslim community. All of us must stand against hatred in all of its forms. <laughs> the double standards here are obvious. Quote, Hillary, my heart breaks for New Zealand and the global Muslim community. We must continue to fight the perpetuation and normalization of Islamophobia and racism in all forms. White supremacist terrorists must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Their murderous hatred must be stopped. How, how about, how about Islamic terrorists? How about we condemn them? Why can't your heart break for Christians? I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, but you read like an open book. It's so obvious, and it's not just Hillary and Barack Obama, although they are the two most permeable examples in the last day and a half, okay? There are several more, and I will show you them on the screen, because they are very evident. Here I was thinking that all people, all lives, all of the religions, and all, all of their pain and suffering, everything mattered, okay? The, 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 this idea that progressivism has put forward, that we need to acknowledge the pain of the past and the pain of the present in order to have a good future for all people. It, it's a prevalent one. And you know what? It's kind of one that I can get behind. Let's acknowledge pain. Sure. Let's find a solution for it. Sure. We may not always agree on the solution, but let's agree that it happened and then go from there. But this isn't agreeing that it happened. This is sweeping it under the rug and hoping it goes away. I absolutely get it. Christianity has had a checkered past, as recent as my last dump. But let's not pretend that that is something exclusive to Christianity. It's, it's, it's an across-the-board phenomenon that all religions have to reconcile with, pretty much. Unless you're living in a bubble of ignorance, it's really hard to ignore that fact. But making it a measuring contest amongst the religions for who is worse based on what actions done to people in the past, the death toll measuring, doesn't, doesn't help anyone, okay? It doesn't help anyone. And that goes for Christians, that goes for Muslims, that goes for Jews, that goes for literally any identity that you can come out with. It doesn't help anyone, because everyone's got pain, everyone's got a past, everyone's got, you know, things that they're guilty of. Get off of your high horse. No one is a saint in this. No. Uh-uh. Everyone's guilty of something. So don't you try to pretend as if you are the arbiter of all virtue, because I know that you're not. Anyone who pretends to be a saint in any capacity above all of this nonsense is lying to you. Does that mean that I think that people should take responsibility for actions that they didn't commit in the past? No, obviously not. If a Muslim blows something up, I'm not expecting a different Muslim who is not related to the first Muslim to take responsibility for that Muslim's actions. The same as if a Christian shoots up a church somewhere or burns it to the ground, I'm not expecting a completely different Christian to take responsibility for that Christian's actions either. Same thing with white people. If a white person enslaved someone 100 years ago, I don't expect white people now to take responsibility for their ancestors or people that they might not even be related to. Who you are, what you do, and why you do it, and how you do it, I guess, too, matters. But it does make me wonder, Easter worshippers. I mean, if it hadn't happened on Easter Sunday of all type, of all the days, not that that's not pointed, but if it hadn't happened on Easter Sunday, what would you, what, what would you, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, what would you have called the Easter worshippers in place of Easter worshippers had, had it been on any other day? 
any other day. Take your pick fancy. Christmas, would it have been Christmas worshipers? St. Patrick's Day, would it have been St. Patrick's worshipers? I don't know. Quite honestly, it's mind boggling that it even came up, that it's a thing, that it's an issue. But here we are because it is an issue and it is important to address because it speaks to a mindset. And that mindset is bye-bye. Your problems don't matter because of your identity. <sighs> the really sad bit of all of this is that you can bet your bottom that by the end of this week, everything that happened on Sunday will all just be a footnote in the history books shoved down to the bottom of the stack, the progressive stack, and relegated to the, the back of people's minds, because <sighs> Sri Lanka, the bombings, it, it wasn't an atrocity committed against a group that's high enough on the progressive stack, and it wasn't perpetrated by a group who's, who's, who's as good as mud on the same metric. It's the opposite of that. And the fact that that's the case means it's as good as dead news.